All right, so the National Disaster uh, Re Response Force team now deployed in Turkey for those rescue operations. I'm joined by the Director General of the NDRF, Mr. Atul Karwal. Sir, thanks very much for being with us. Any detail that you can share with us at this stage on what our NDRF personnel have been doing in Turkey presently, sir? Uh, yes, thank you, Vishnu, for having me here. Uh, the first team landed before 11 o'clock today morning and uh, they have been deployed in an area which is about three hours away from Adana airport where they had landed. So they are en route right now. And uh, it comprises of about 51, exactly 50, 51 rescuers. Uh, they're accompanied by a canine squad also. And in those 51 rescuers, we have five Mahila rescuers, which is the first. So they are uh, off to the site they have been designated for. And the second team is en route, it would land at about 8 o'clock tonight, and then they would be allotted a site as well for operations. And sir, could you give us an idea of the specific expertise this team goes uh, into this disaster zone with? Uh, they have, an, have a specialization in CSSR, as we call it, Collapse Structures Search and Rescue. They also have an expertise in rope rescue from high-rise buildings. So they primarily go prepared for an earthquake situ situation and they have taken all the equipment that is required to accomplish that. We also could send some vehicles, which was again a first for us because the Indian Air Force deployed their C-17 airplanes, which could carry our vehicles as well. So we don't need to depend on transport for the on the local authorities and we can take care of ourselves on our own. So what is the area specifically that you are heading into? Could you describe what that's, what, uh, where the NDRF are going to be deployed? Is it broken buildings? Are you looking for people who may be trapped within rubble? What are some of the operations you foresee? Uh, it put mostly in collapsed structures. So buildings have collapsed uh, across a large swath of Turkey. And uh, if you see on the map about 10 districts or provinces as they call are affected so it's a widespread damage so they have directed us to one of the worst affected areas which would allow us to do the maximum contribution and saving human lives there's a lot of technology which goes into these operations i've, I've reported extensively on the ndrf you deploy for example uh, ground penetrating radars you deploy drones whenever it is required. Uh, the process of digging through buildings is very careful, it's, but, and yet very deliberate, and every second counts. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how uh, the, the women and men under your command who are deployed over there would go about their business? So they have equipment which can detect a sound at a very, very low volume, like a heartbeat or somebody scratching or somebody uh, making any kind of a noise for help. We then triangulate with our equipment to get the exact location. The sniffer dogs, which they have carried, they have an expertise of detecting live human victims under the rubble. They help us find the exact location where we need to cut it. And then we have specialty tools which can cut through uh, thick concrete, uh, steel reinforced concrete, bolt cutters, etc. So we zero in on a location where there is a noise, where there is a possibility of a live victim, and then go deep inside to get that person out. And what about medical assistance? Uh, should you be able to get people out? Do you have doctors have, uh, with you? Yes, we have a doctor on board and all our rescues are trained in medical first responder course. So they are uh, trained to provide the first aid as soon as we recover a victim. We also carry paramedics. So the initial care is adequately given by the NDRF team before the victim is shifted to a nearby hospital. And sir, how long can you sustain your operations over there? Uh, we have gone uh, with the self-sustaining capability of two weeks, which means we had carried our own tentage, our own rations, etc. as well. But I feel that that may not be required to that extent. Some accommodation might be possible. And we can carry on uh, for as long as required uh, because I'm sure that down the line, some local assistance would be possible as far as uh, food and boarding is concerned. So I don't really have any uh, uh, doubts that my boys can carry on work for as long as the, the Turkish government might require us. And needless to mention, sir, uh, the, 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 the crew, that you, the, the personnel of the NDRF over there will, will work 24 hours a day, through the day, through the night, for as long as they need to, right? The goal to save lives. Yes, the initial hours are more important for saving live victims. So the work requires to be done in a non-stop fashion 
for the first 72 hours or even longer. So the rescuers have trained for that. They have improved their fitness for that. Over the last one year, we have done exercises in low light or no light operations. So all that has been really worked upon uh, through the life of this force, which is 17 years old now. So I'm sure they'll do a good job and be able to contribute effectively. And sir, it's a combined India operation. The NDRF has a couple of teams. The Army has a big team as well. You won't be working in the same area. You'll be deployed. So India and our forces will be deployed across the disaster zone. Uh, that is likely. The local authorities take a call. They look at the capacity and the competence of the help that is pouring in, including materials and men like us, rescues like us. And then they would allot us to various areas depending on the severity and their need. So I'm sure that we would probably be spread across a wider swath than just at one place. And sir, communication is a problem, isn't it? Uh, as of now, we are in touch with the team. They are able to uh, send us text on WhatsApp and some pictures as well. We have carried satellite phones. We have also carried our satellite antennas and we'll coordinate with the VSNL to, to ensure that we can get some connectivity even when the satellite phone network uh, in, even when the mobile phone network is down. So communication, we are okay. We will be in touch with the teams continuously. And so when did you first know that you had to be deployed? It was what an order or a request that came in from the Turkish government through the External Affairs Ministry. How exactly did you first come to know, sir? And how soon before our teams were ready to move? So as soon as the uh, tragedy happened uh, early in the morning, uh, 0417 hours, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister pledged support. There was a meeting held yesterday morning by the Prime Minister's office where things were put together and instructions were given to prepare the teams. Uh, we have been preparing two uh, teams for international deployment over the past several months at Calcutta and Delhi. So it took us not too long to put them together and then some documentation was required to be done for passports and visas and stuff like that. So. Uh, also, the Indian Air Force prepared their planes. They had to obtain clearances for flying over certain countries. So, uh, the teams were finally dispatched at just past 3 o'clock. The first team went at 3 o'clock today morning. So, it was done uh, in quick time. And sir, you flew into uh, the disaster zone, right? Uh, this is the closest possible airport, right? Yes, because Ankara was too far away. And uh, local transportation uh, would have been an issue with traffic jams and availability of transport, which is why we carried our own. So they directed us to Adana, which is right on the edge of the affected areas and all areas which are affected are close by and accessible from there. So that's the airport we have landed at. And sir, once again, how many personnel uh, do you have deployed in total? Uh, total 101 rescuers, uh, four of our uh, canine partners. Uh, that makes it 101 plus 4 and uh, 7 vehicles. Right. Yeah. And sir, do you foresee, uh, and my last question to you, do you foresee a, a potential additional deployment uh, depending on what the requirement may be? Are you ready for that, sir? Yes, that will depend on what they uh, request us for. Uh, we have more teams uh, being prepared for deploying them in addition to what has gone. We have sent two teams. We also have some material which we normally store for such occasions from sleeping bags to blankets to pumps to generator sets. So depending on what uh, the Turkish government uh, requires, we should be able to help out to a large extent. And sir, uh, you know, the, the, the role of the NDRF, and I've seen this in other areas, is in as much as you are involved in the immediate rescue operations, when you come across people in distress, you immediately assist them with food, water, medicine, anything at all, right? That's part of the training. Yes, it is. It is we try and anticipate all that can be required in such a situation by a victim whom we recover and be able to provide help till the person reaches the hospital so that the life can be saved. All right. Well, let's hope that lives can be saved. I'm sure our, uh, our NDRF personnel will, uh, will do well and save lives. Time of essence. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing those details with us. Thanks very much indeed, sir. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you.